Good morning, game devs and gamers out there. I think everybody's interested about, you know, object pooling. <laughs> or, well, maybe destruction is what they might call it or what you might call it. So, good morning, everybody. Uh, as a celebration of starting a new Twitter account, Game Dev Micah, I wanted to go ahead and do a little 20 minute video about how I use object pooling in Unreal Engine. Now, there's a lot of ways to use object pooling. Uh, the engine itself and a lot of its tools use object pooling or pooling themselves, which is great. But I'm going to talk specifically about how I pool actors and uh, what advantage I think there is to that, which I think ends up uh, with me making my own Niagara system based on uh, that pooling, <laughs> which is a little bit overkill, perhaps. But we'll find out. All right, so we're in my game tear up, well, which is a tribute. And what you see here is a building, which I've filled in the matrix, and a whole bunch of meshes inside of it. I'm going to go into a wireframe, and when you're looking at this wireframe, everything we're seeing is currently asleep, not simulating. So I'm not pulling anything in the structure, but of course we do still have cars driving around. And an important part is we can show this off with the cars that Unreal used. When they're pink like they are now, they're instances, and I believe when we get close to them, it should convert them into an actor. Oh, but the actors are still partially instanced, so it won't look as good as I was hoping for. Uh, meaning that in my building, now you're seeing green meshes. Green meshes represent a uh, simulating actor or something taken out of the pool, and they'll be turned back into cyan or sleeping actors uh, once they are moving slow enough or a certain distance away from the player. So what I'm doing here is aggressively sleeping uh, instances. Oh my gosh. I have async turned on right now and I haven't uh, fixed issues around that. Uh, async physics and the uh, matrix. I have to match that up or turn it off. <laughs> I've been traditionally just turning it off and doing non-async. But uh, I was doing some tests yesterday and it's still on. So as I'm destroying this building here, what's happening is I'm waking up the instant static mesh uh, GPU grouped versions of those individual locations on the building and placing a pooled static mesh that I then start to simulate physics on in place of it. Additionally, if you watch the falling pieces from this building, they'll be green in the, in the beginning, but as they fall, they're going to turn pink. And what I'm doing there is I'm also pulling out the uh, simulating actor, projecting when it's going to hit the ground, and then when it's about to hit the ground, I go ahead and take that uh, simulating actor, or rather the falling instance I have, and convert it back into a simulating actor. So we watch them here. They turn pink, and they turn green, and then they turn cyan again, if I'm far enough away. So the big advantage to pooling your actors or simulation is that you can control how much is going on. So like in that um, pile there we have of debris, if you were to wake it all up typically, like I'm doing right here, I'm just flying right through it and turning all those pieces into simulating actors, they normally would fight with each other forever because they're trying to settle and there's not enough space. And so what, I'm done, what I've done is I've... Uh, put some uh, breakup on those pieces where after they've hit a, few, a certain amount of times they'll actually reduce in size and emit some particles and then after enough hits they'll go ahead and just break up and that helps with creating space inside the pile and also it triggers all of the uh, smoke and visual effects. Now we're specifically talking about pooling so why is this using pooling? Why am I not just using actors for this? is because of the cost of spawning an actor and deleting an actor and the frequency I'm doing it. So what you'll see is this building is probably made up of 20 to 30,000 individual meshes. And if I was to just well, try to query 20 to 30,000 meshes per building, I would end up having millions of meshes or actors in this world that I'd be querying. So by having them as instant static meshes in these buildings, that cuts down your amount of actor query if you do that or overlaps, etc. Um, <clears throat> additionally, the cost to spawn your garbage collection and stuff like that for each, you know, 20, 30,000, it's just going to hit you. And that's what you also see with, uh, I think, level streaming in these uh, worlds is that the levels have the entire actors, and so you load them in and 
unload them. Uh, I'm going to look into converting that into just, I mean, it's hard to believe that they're not. They probably are. But look into converting those into just transforms and mesh IDs, if not just an instant static mesh, which they are. But somehow that load uh, and, and pool my instant static meshes, because that's what I do here as well. So when you have an instant static mesh, if you delete or add, it messes with the IDs. If you pool a static count of instant static meshes, you don't mess with the IDs and they stay consistent. So that's a big trick on how I'm doing all this is that uh, I'm keeping a small number of instances in my ISMs and I pool those IDs as well. Everywhere I can think about it, I'm pooling um, to reduce down the overhead, but then also to, uh, yeah, I mean, it's just so much faster. I mean, we're reducing down that overhead of loading and unloading because I do it so often. So the next phase is, so that's what I mainly want to talk about was that the only way I'm able to complete and, and do this type of level of destruction is because I'm aggressively taking my simulating actors and sleeping them in the GPU instances with ISMs when they are not needing simulating data. To include when they're falling out of the sky, that I'll project them onto the ground. That way, what you end up happening is, as the physics slow down in your game, uh, impacts will go for further and further distances between uh, frame calculations, so between your tick. And what that does is that when you hit something, it's going to put a whole bunch of force into it and shoot it really far off. Uh, and you can see some of the stickiness. Uh, actually, that might not be stickiness. But shoot it really far off. <clears throat> and that will cause that simulating actor to be hang time in the air and still need to be calculated. That will cause more latency in your frame time. More pieces will be sending in the air and it compounds. And so when I blow up this building and hit it with an asteroid or a shoot out all those pieces from an explosion, that's going to slow things down, but I can go ahead and just grab those pieces, and you can see here, you won't see when the transition happens, and just force them to go ahead and fall to the ground get them out of the simulation tree. So that's my pooling of physics, pooling of instances to keep my instance IDs consistent, and uh, I also pool my managers, which are the blueprint scripts I've written to do all this pooling per instance mesh, so that I can then uh, save the memory and reassign those mesh cores to the active meshes that are used in the world. Uh, and then I also prioritize the pooling. So when I return a mesh core to its pool, I know what mesh it is currently assigned, so that if I need to use that core again, I look first to see if I already have all the meshing assigned. Because when you assign a static mesh and materials, it also has a big impact on um, garbage collection and loading. And also when I'm pooling my, my actors that are simulating each individual piece, I'm also checking and storing them in a local pool on that mesh core. So I know I'm pulling, I don't have to assign or change the static mesh. Uh, and then if I have a failure condition, like I can't get any out of a global pool, I'll go ahead and return actors there from those individual mesh cores. So this is a, a bit of a, uh, I think, advanced pooling talk. So, you know, you don't have to go and pool everything day one. Uh, a good example of, a, I would think, a way to pool stuff is pooling um, agents such as AI so that you're, maybe you don't you have an instance of an of a AI setting somewhere or standing somewhere that's just a static mesh and when you come within a, you know, 5,000 uh, units of it, it will be converted into a player. And I did do another tutorial about how I do that with instant static meshes and uh, a whole bunch of robots and the superhero flying around. So I will go ahead and link that at the end of this video. All right. Thank you for watching and have a great day. Uh, please like and subscribe if uh, you're on YouTube. And if you're on any of the other platforms, hit me up. Have a great day.